this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. Sandra Walter and her son Jean have always been close, sharing an interest in the occult. But when Sandra finds herself lost and alone, her fascination soon turns to obsession. As she heads down a dangerous path, Jean fears that his mother is turning against him. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. The supernatural realm is vast uncharted, attracting those who seek answers beyond the physical world. But its mysteries are infinite and its power unpredictable. When toyed with, its consequences can be deadly. The year is 1965. Sandra Waldron and her son Jean have just settled into their new home in Geneva, Ohio. husband Steven works at a nearby engineering company. Hey. How was your day? It was fine. How about you? Everything okay here? Oh, yeah. Steven is the only father that Gene has ever known. Great. What's for dinner? I never really knew my real father. Steven had been my stepfather since I was two, three years old. Hey, uh, do me a favor and take Gene inside and get him washed up for dinner. Honey. I've been working all day. I just want to get out of these clothes and relax. Hey, remember what I said before we got married? Parenting is a 24-hour job, and now you're a parent. My husband never mentioned that it bothered him that Jean wasn't his child, but I do think it did bother him some. I think he resented it a little bit. Come on, Jean, buddy. Sandra hopes that one day Stephen will be able to accept Jean as his own. unearths an old cornerstone. Someone had died on our property and it had been an old schoolmaster that had lived there quite a few years back. She's intrigued. She had no idea that her property was once the site of an old schoolhouse. Hey, what are you doing? Come on, let's eat. I'll be right there and wonders how the schoolmaster passed away. Stephen, did you know there used to be a school here? What's that? There's a cornerstone out by the side of the house. Yeah, I remember our neighbor Denise say something about that. Sandra but has always remember. believed in the existence of spirits and their interaction Denise? with the living world. How'd she say he died? My interest in the occult and the supernatural has been with me all my life. There's so much that we don't know. It just fascinates me. I want to know all I can about it. Wow. 
Sandra, please don't start with that hocus pocus garbage again. You know, you've been spending way too much time reading those weird books again. The supernatural is kind of taboo for a lot of people. My husband was more apprehensive about those things than I was. Perhaps if you spent more time taking care of the house, that'd be a good idea. Stephen, I keep the house just fine. And I happen to think that my books are fascinating. Where are you going? What about dinner? Oh, I'm done with dinner. Honey, I'm just joking. Sandra's discovery of the cornerstone only fuels her interest in the occult. I believe if you're open to things, then maybe they can come in. Hey, it's getting late. Why don't you put that book down and get to sleep? And I bet you won't leave me alone until I do, right? You got it. Over the next month, Sandra soon forgets about the old schoolmaster. these heavy boots and walk across the floor. Let's go upstairs, okay? She assumes that it's Stephen home early from work. There was definitely no one there. It maybe alarmed me a little bit, but I wasn't really scared. It just really piqued my curiosity. Because of her interest in the occult, Sandra wonders if she could have invited a presence into her home. I decided that, well, maybe it was the schoolmaster that was haunting our house. I wasn't doing anything intentionally, but I could have possibly opened a door. A few years pass. In 
and Jean is now 11 years old. I'm sorry. That's okay. Boys are allowed to be boys. terrified of my dad if they were at my house playing and they saw my dad pull up they ran everybody was scared of him you see this this is gonna cost money I'm sorry I'll work it off I promise that goes without saying you'll work every weekend cutting the grass until you pay for this Gene's relationship with his stepfather never really develops. He was always angry and yelling at me. He never told me he loved me. He never said anything nice to me. That was never good enough for him. Stephen, give Gene a break. It was an accident. He was just trying to have some fun with his friends. We could all use a little more fun around here. Sandra, this is going to cost me an arm and a leg to fix. Your son has no concept of money. Stephen's ambivalence towards Jean begins to put a strain on their marriage. I'm sorry. I meant our son. It's been a long day. Why don't you go inside and I'll be in the wild fixed dinner? My husband was very critical of Jean. It was painful for me. I love my son, and I, I wanted him to feel more comfortable at home. Tell you what, there's a scary movie on tonight. How about we watch it? Okay. Okay. As Stephen grows distant, it only brings Sandra and Jean closer together. favorite thing to do was to watch scary movies. When we were watching movies together, uh, we'd turn the lights down, you know, get some popcorn and just make an evening of it. It was just a lot of fun um, being scared. Don't worry, I won't ruin your night. Besides, I'm gonna go watch the game with the guys. So, how are things with you and Stephen lately? The next day, Sandra and Jean go over to their neighbor Denise's house. Hey, Jean. Do you go home and get that can of beans out of the cupboard? Okay, okay, and hurry up, because we're going to eat soon.
I never experienced anything like that before. I just felt that, that there was something evil in the house. Sandra believes that Jean was visited by the schoolmaster, but she downplays the incident, not wanting to feed into his fear. She just completely wrote it off, and I began to wonder later if maybe it was my imagination. Still, Sandra is intrigued by Jean's encounter. She hopes to one day become a published author and begins to write about his experience. After a few weeks, Jean soon forgets about his unexplainable encounter. Instead, Jean has been eagerly awaiting for the boat trip that Stephen has planned for this day. What are you doing in that boat? I was just checking it out. Well, it's not yours to check out, is it? I wasn't going to break anything. I was just sitting in it. Well, then get out of it. You got no business being in there in the first place. Whenever I was around my stepfather, you were walking on eggshells and you knew if you just said the wrong thing he was going to explode and you have no respect i go out of my way to get this boat so i can make your mom happy and take you fishing and what do i get maybe i shouldn't go what? of course you're going you've been looking forward to it all week he's just gonna yell at me i don't want to go Please don't make me go. Okay. Maybe I'll stay home too. No way, Sandra. What are my friends gonna say if you're not there? Under no circumstances are we going to cancel this boat trip. Just go ahead, Mom. I am not leaving you home alone. Sandra, quit babying the kid. He's old enough to stay home alone. I am not babying him his mother and I worry about him. I'll just go to Mark and Jimmy's house until you get back. Are you sure? Well then, we'll be back at seven. Okay. All right, be a good boy. I'll we'll see you later this evening. turns from his friend's house and sees that his parents are still out for the night. Tell me what happened. Tell me what's going on. Jean, it's okay. It's okay. We're home now. For crying out loud. You were right. We can't leave the kid home alone. Stephen, do me a favor and just get out of here so I can see what's going on. Jean 
tries to explain to his mother what he saw. I saw a tall, thin man, and his face was all red and disfigured, and it just terrified me. Why am I seeing these awful things? There's something I should have told you a long time ago, but I didn't. I've got something to show you. Sandra tells him about the schoolmaster who died on their property. He knew something was going on. I felt really bad for Gene. I did, and uh, I didn't want to see him that frightened. This man, he died right here? In our front yard? I think so. She goes on to say that she has had many encounters with his spirit and has never felt threatened by his presence. Sandra figures that Gene is just overreacting because of his age. Think of it like one of those scary movies that we like to watch. They're really scary, but in the end, it's just a movie. Gene eventually accepts his mother's explanation. She made me feel so much better and not be so afraid because I knew that my mother was there for me and wouldn't let anything happen to me. Sandra is able to comfort Jean. She wonders if there is a way to remove the spirit from the house. does not see or hear from the schoolmaster again. But another problem is plaguing the house. Sandra and Stephen begin to fight non-stop. And Gene does whatever he can to escape. Gene, it's good to see you again. Guess your parents couldn't make it here today. My best friend invited me to church early on, and I really liked it, and I just kept on going pretty much ever since. And if you need someone to talk to, give me a call. Okay, thanks. Church was a reason to stay away from the house. Thank <laughs> you. 
For weeks, Sandra has the same dream over and over again. The dreams were usually much more vivid to me than regular dreams. And she wonders what these recurring images could possibly mean. to the point where I had to leave. Well, I guess this is it. Take good care of your mother, okay? Although the breakup is hard, Sandra knows that it's for the best. I felt it was a good thing. I was looking to start a new life, but I had no idea what lay ahead. I was hoping it was the right thing to do. Sandra decides to move back to Texas City, her hometown. Texas City was where I was born and raised. I had family there. I hoped that would be good for me and my son both. Sandra hasn't left Geneva in years, but suddenly the drive becomes oddly familiar. The dream was definitely an indication that I was going to be leaving. She now realizes that her dreams are visions of the future. I thought it was so obviously prophetic. Sandra finds a small house that she can afford. thing doing in here what's this right in the center of that floor was a star a five-pointed star what is it it's a symbol it's called a pentagram Sandra is familiar with the pentagram having read about it in her books on the occult. What's it mean? It means different things to different people. She also knows that people have used it to practice witchcraft. When I first discovered the pentagram, I thought, wow, there were witches here. I knew that it would just depend you know, which way you use the star, whether it was good or bad. Uh, I'm going to check out I wondered, was this coincidence? Or had I, by some unnatural forces, come to this house? I saw it as a positive sign that maybe 
maybe I was on the right path. Over the next few years, Sandra struggles with the pressures of being a single mother and has little time to focus on anything else. She takes on odd jobs to support her and Jean, but finds herself struggling to pay the mounting bills. Since my husband and I had split, I had never really worked. I had to support myself and my son, and uh, I was scared. Sandra hopes to sell one of her stories to a publisher, but her dream of becoming an author is no closer to coming true. Come on. Hey. Jean is now ready to graduate high school. Hey, there's a zombie movie on tonight. You want to watch it? You know, I'm not into that stuff anymore. Besides, I told you, I already made plans with friends. Can I borrow the car? Jean and I were getting more distant. And that made me sad because I wanted us to be close. Just don't drive too fast, okay? See you later. With Jean no longer around, Sandra finds solace in her books on the occult, which have always given her comfort. She is immediately drawn to Wicca, an earth-based religion that worships both a male and female deity. It was positive on the female side. Women were equal on men. I think that's one of the things that attracted me. She is also intrigued by the Wiccan belief that one can create change using the energy that surrounds them. Sandra creates an altar using items that represent the four elements of nature, earth, air, fire, and water. I didn't have anybody to teach me, so I had to learn everything on my own through books, primarily. I was hoping with Wicca that maybe I could change things. Maybe I could make things more positive in my life and my son's life. Sandra performs her first ritual. Earth sanctions my magic tonight. She calls out to the god and goddess, asking them to help ease her growing debt. I call forth the forces of prosperity, truth, transformation, and purification. Sandra repeats the chant over and over again, channeling the energy around her. Mother Goddess, Father God, grant me this wish. You can actually feel like an energy. It's a sensation of like an electric power going through your body. It's a very positive feeling of power.
weeks later. Sandra receives a letter from a magazine. They plan to publish one of her short stories and have included a generous paycheck. When my first ritual worked, I was hooked. It made me feel like I had some kind of control over my life, that I can make things change when they go wrong. My mother just got deeper and deeper into the supernatural and it just drove me more awake. I'd been scared to death when I was a kid and I was afraid that something was going to happen. Incredible dream last night. Actually, I think it was a vision. I really my mom just started talking to me about the occult a whole lot more. I really think that this experience is a sign of things to come. It just seems like we were becoming two different people and going our own ways. But enough about that. So, graduation is less than a month away. Have you started looking for a job? Sort of. Really? <laughs> well, tell me. What are you going to be doing? I signed up with the Air Force. I'm leaving just a couple days after graduation. between my mother and I had gotten so strained that I decided my best chance was to back. join the military, get away, clear my head, figure out the answers to life's questions myself without my mother's influence. Soon after Gene graduates, he leaves to serve in the Air Force. When Jean was in the military, I really got into Wicca and started really practicing it and uh, doing rituals. slowly loses touch with his mother. After I joined the Air Force and I started to travel, I couldn't tell anybody what I was doing. I could hardly receive my mom. After seven years in the Air Force, Gene returns home to Texas City. I was looking forward to seeing my mother and, and coming home. And I thought things were going to be great. Jean. Hi. He is surprised Hi. by Sandra's appearance and is unsure how to react to this unexpected change. She had black hair, black blouse, black pants. She had a necklace with a pentagram on it. I was just dazed. I'm so glad you're finally home. Looks like you remodeled while I was away. Well, 
right, let's get you set up in your old room. It's just as you left it. I, uh, remember this being here. Well, I'll, I'll leave you to unpack, and dinner will be in half an hour. It was just too much for me. The way my mom looked, the way the house was. So now I have a picture of the devil in my room. Last couple of years in the military, I started to really go to church. And so by the time I got out, I was a very devout Christian. That evening, mm. Sandra and Jean <laughs> catch up over dinner. That looks and smells as good as I remember it. Well, I know it's your favorite. So, tell me, what's been happening? Hmm. Well, life has been great, Jean. I mean, ever since I started practicing Wicca, things have changed. And for the better. What does that mean, exactly, to study Wicca? So I was concerned that she was practicing some form of magic. Even if her intentions were good, it, the potential for it to go wrong just is what scared me. Honey, there's nothing to be concerned about. I thought, what, what, what was it? And I thought maybe it was just headlights shining in the window.
I've been worried sick about you. Worried sick? Really? Did you get up in the middle of the night to check on me? Because last night I was attacked. I was attacked by a woman that looked just like you. Destroy him. Jade, I have no idea what you're talking about. Mom. It wasn't me, I, I promise you that. Mother, I'm scared for you. I'm scared of what you've let in. You're opening doors you don't know how to close. Jean, I'm not doing anything wrong. Mom, you're in over your head. You've got to stop this right now. I don't know what to tell you other than I love you and I would never do anything to hurt you. You know this, right? I don't know anything anymore. I gotta go. I need to clear my head. scours the library, hoping to find something that could explain what he experienced. I had never seen lights like these before. I wanted to know what it was. He discovers a book on the occult that refers to these paranormal phenomena as sprites. These sprites they were a product of witchcraft. I believe that her intentions were good, but that she had let something in the house that was evil. to go back in the house and fight for my mom because I knew something was trying to destroy us both. Mom? You home? We need to talk. cross in a pentagram I was furious I cannot believe you mother you are messing with things that you cannot control where are you going I'm afraid of what you've let in and I'm not going to stick around to see what happens I thought my mom was casting spells on me Jean now believes that the schoolmaster was really an evil entity that his mother may have conjured up many years ago. Something came into my mother's life when I was a child and tried to show her dreams and tried to take her down a path into the occult. cuts all ties with Sandra. 
realizing that there is nothing he can do to stop her. I felt that my mom was too far gone. The more I talked to her, the more I thought that she was lying to herself, lying to me. So I finally left. Sandra is devastated by Jean's angry departure. I was really upset that he thought I was causing something. I could understand maybe why he would think I was doing it because I said I was a witch. But she continues to practice Wicca despite her son's warning. I was going to do a dedication to Isis. Isis is the supreme mother goddess of ancient Egypt. She is also considered the most powerful deity of the pantheon. Great goddess Isis, I dedicate myself to you. In this place of power, I open myself to your energy. Great goddess Isis, make me one with your spirit. I dedicate myself to you. Sandra prays to Isis, believing that she can guide her through this turbulent time. In this place of power, I open myself to your energy. I open myself to your energy. Great goddess Isis, make me one with your spirit. I dedicate myself to you. Goddess Isis, I dedicate myself to you. Goddess Isis, I dedicate myself to you. hoping that it will close the door to the other side. I think they were demons. This scared me so bad that I said, that's it. I want out. I don't know what I'm doing. It was definitely something I couldn't control. You're messing with something that is beyond our comprehension. Jean and Sandra eventually reconcile their relationship, and they are closer than ever before. Now we talk almost every day, and we're trying to make up for lost time. So, and everything else is going on? Yes, ma'am. Jean is now a minister and counsels people who are victims of supernatural events. Sandra finally realizes her dream and becomes a published author. She never practices Wicca again. She believes that her inexperience with practicing magic allowed these demonic entities into their lives. It's possible that my interest in the occult all my life could have opened some doors. I could have been manipulated by demons or other spirits. 
I just don't know. I don't know the answers. I believe that it started out as one evil spirit that just became many and tried to destroy our lives.